Today, I'll be showing you how to use GIMP, which is an image manipulation program and a great free alternative to Photoshop. In another video, I did a top five list of the best free Photoshop alternatives. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you'd like to check that out. GIMP is my personal favorite from that list, but one of those other programs may fit your needs better. This video will be just a basic beginner's guide for new users to get started using GIMP. If you're new to our channel, welcome to Tech Gumbo. If you'd like to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in technology, make sure to click the subscribe button below this video so you don't miss anything. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get to the GIMP tutorial. To download GIMP, you'll want to go to GIMP.org. I will provide a direct link in the description of this video. Once you're here, click on the download button. Now you'll see different options based on your operating system. Here you see one for Windows and one for OS X. If you're a Linux user, GIMP may already come with your particular distro. So check that first before downloading from here. You should choose the option to download directly. If you're familiar with torrents, then downloading via BitTorrent may be best for you. Once you have downloaded and installed, open up GIMP. Once you have GIMP opened up, you should see a layout that looks a lot like this with the primary window in the center with the toolbox on the left and the layers window on the right. If you don't, select Tools and then find the option that you're missing to add it to your desktop. In the main window here, you have several options which include File, Edit, Select, View, Image, and so on and so forth. In the left pane is your toolbox, which you'll be using quite a bit. It contains the usual suspects, like on how to move an image, click that. Here's an icon for creating text. The tool for scaling an image, and several others here. In the right pane is the layers box, which I'll show you how to use later on. Now I'm going to go through some of the basics of using GIMP. If you feel I'm moving too quickly, pause the video to try out what I'm showing you. First, let's open up a new project. So go up here, click on File, and then click New. It's going to ask you for your image size. I'll scale this down a little bit. Let's do 1600 by 900. Under Advanced Options, you actually have several options. Popular one here, including Fill Width which includes foreground color, background color, white transparency. If you're working with PNG images, you may want to select the transparency option. For this exercise, we'll leave it as background color. And when you're done, click OK. To change the background color, select the bucket fill tool from the toolbox. And then go down here and click on background foreground colors option. Select the color you want. You can select from one of the options here if you have them, or you can pick your own color. I actually prefer the off grays. They provide a nice contrast. Once you're done with that, click OK. Position your mouse anywhere on the background and then left click to apply your color. I like to expand the window out a little bit by dragging the lower right corner. This won't change the size of your image though. GIMP works with layers. This works great to not ruin anything you've previously done in your image and to easily come back to a layer to make changes. To create a layer, go to the right pane and select Create a new layer. Leave the options as they are and click OK. You can create as many layers as you need. With this new layer, let's create some text. So go back to the left pane, the toolbox, select the text tool, 
go into your image and just drag out a uh, text bar for you. Go down to the lower part of the text tool right here and select a different color because I don't think gray on gray is going to work very well. Let's select white. Click OK. And let's increase the size too. 18 is a little small. Let's go over here to size. You can put in a number randomly or you can use the up down arrows here to change the font size. And then just type in whatever you want. And if you find that text is a little too small for you, just go back here to the size tool and just up the size a little bit. Now it's a little bit too big for this text box. And you'll see options on here to resize the text box. So just go to the lower left, far right, lower and then upper. For here, let's do the lower. Click and drag it down. If you decide you want to go with something other than white, let's go back to the color window here. Let's do an off blue. When you're done with that, just go back to the layers options here. Click in the white space for background. So you can see what you just did without all the lines around it. To move a layer in your image, first let's go back to layers. Click in any white space to select that layer. Go back to the toolbox, click on the Move tool, go anywhere in that layer, and then click and drag where you'd like to move that to. Then select the white space in the background layer to get rid of the lines around there. And I don't like where I've moved that. So you could either go up here to edit and you can select undo move text layer. A shortcut key for that is control plus Z. And it moves it back to where you previously had it before you moved it. Now I'm gonna show you how to create a rectangle, circle, or oval in your image. So let's go back to layers Click on Create a New Layer. Click OK. Go back to the Toolbox. You have the options here for a Rectangle Select Tool or the Ellipse Select Tool. Let's do the Ellipse. Click in it. Go back to your image. Go outside of it. Let's do, le look, let's do upper left-hand corner. Click and drag around your image. If you need to resize it, there's all these yellow boxes surrounding the, the oval, and you can take those and drag them out if you need to, to try to make them as perfect as possible. And if you want to fill this space with a different color than gray, go back to the Bucket Fill tool, select a color, and we'll just leave the color as black. Click OK, and click anywhere within the uh, oval right here. And to see this without any of the lines, clicking on the white space in the background doesn't work for this one. So go up here to Select and select None. Now I'm going to show you how to use the Blend Tool. So let's go back to the toolbox. Click on Blend Tool. And you have different options down here for opacity and, and which colors you want to use. Several options here. You can click any of those if you want to. I'm going to leave it with this one. Now you can either go from the left to the right, click and drag, and then let go. So let's undo that by hitting Control Z or going to Edit and selecting undo. 
or let's try it from top to bottom, see how that works. Yeah, that's a little bit better, so we'll leave it that way. Once you're completely satisfied with your image and you decide that you don't want to make any further changes to the image, you'll want to go up here to File, click on Export As, do not click on Save or Save As, click on Export As, select where you want to save the image to, and of course name your image. And you have the option down here to select the file type you want to save the image as. You can select it as a JPEG or PNG is popular and so on and so forth. And once you're done, click on export. You have these options here if you want to change those. I usually leave them as they are and then click on export. And now the image is saved. Let's say you're not happy with this image. For example, I'm not happy with this image. I would never save this image. But if I wanted to work on it later on and make changes to the different layers, you would go here to File, Save As, name your file, save as an, as an XCF, choose where you want to save it to, and then click on Save. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to scale an image. So go up here to File, click on Open, find the file that you'd like to scale. So I'll select here the GIMP logo, click Open, and there it is. We'll make this a little bit bigger. To scale the image, Go over here back to the toolbox, select the Scale tool, click inside the image. If you'd like to make it smaller, you can put in predetermined numbers here for width and height, or you can select the up and down arrows. Right here you see this lock. Leave it locked so it scales proportionally. We'll make it smaller. Once you're satisfied, click on Scale and now the image is smaller. If you want to make it bigger than it was, go the opposite way, hit the arrow up, and then click Scale. Be careful doing this. If you make an image bigger than it originally was, it's gonna turn out blurry, kind of like this, and that won't look good. So my advice is always to choose a large image and then scale it smaller as need be so it maintains the same resolution as it previously had. GIMP is an awesome tool. In fact, I did the simplistic thumbnail for this video using GIMP. I only scratched the surface of what you can do with this software, but hopefully this gives you a baseline on how to use GIMP. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about GIMP, or if you would like to see me do more detailed project-oriented videos about GIMP. If you haven't done so already, click on that subscribe button below this video for more tutorials and best of tech lists from Tech Gumbo.